I am a big believer in sun exposure and make the effort to expose myself as often as possible. But UV rays can and do zap up a whole lot of trouble. And more and more people seem to be at the receiving end of this trouble. Skin cancer stats are sobering. So what gives? Our ancestors didn't use sunblock. Now odds are they were probably a whole lot smarter about their sun exposure than some modern humans are. For them, sun worshipping was more figurative than literal. But just like us, they would not have been impervious to damaging UV rays. So how did they stay safe in the sun? Well, maybe they were using sunblock. This is what a group of researchers based at the dermatology department at the University of California, San Diego, think. The sunblock they were using was not zinc oxide or some other synthetic chemical. It was a chemical produced by a skin resident. The resident was the superpower, Staphylococcus epidermidis. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we look at what our ancestors used to stay safe in the sun. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, hair for lumps and other health parables through Better Body Chemistry. Remember, Small things can make a big difference to your health. The skin microbiome, it doesn't get as much press as the gut microbiome. But just like the human gut, the skin is teeming with microorganisms. As a habitat, well, it is a little dry, but there is plenty to eat. And just like the gut, there are good guys and bad guys. And they're fighting it out for a place in the sun and shade. Now, one of the epic battles is that between Staphylococcus epidermidis, who's a good guy, and Group A Streptococcus, a seriously bad guy. It was this battle that the team was busy studying. They found Staphylococcus epidermidis produced a rather unusual chemical. Now, they knew it wasn't a protein. In fact, it took some fancy chemistry to work out exactly what it was. It ended up being a nuclear base analog named 6-N-hydroxyamine purine, or 6-HAP for short. Now, as a purine analog, it turns out this chemical can jam DNA synthesis. It's able to do this because it looks a lot like adenine. This is one of the four nucleotides that create the genetic code of DNA. And when DNA is being made, adenine needs to be slotted in place next to a thymine. Because 6 half looks like adenine, it creates confusion. The DNA polymerase enzyme picks it up instead of an adenine and tries to slot it in, but it doesn't fit properly. This leads to DNA synthesis stopping. Now, this is a big problem if you are a competing bacteria and if you're a rogue cell. Inspired by the fact that nuclear base analogs are used to treat cancer, the team explored how human cells reacted to 6-HAP. They found keratinocytes. Now, these are normal skin cells, didn't mind being flushed with 6-HAP one little bit. DNA synthesis proceeded normally. The reason these cells have a special set of enzymes that remove the 6-HAP before it gets up to mischief. But melanoma cells these are cancerous skin cells, do mind. It turns out when they get flushed with 6-HAP, their DNA synthesis screeches to a halt. 
when the team injected mice with melanoma cells and then treated them with 6-HAP, there was a 60% reduction in the growth of the tumor. Having demonstrated the ability of 6-HAP to rein in skin cells gone crazy, the team looked to see whether having Staphylococcus epidermidis as a resident might be able to protect mice from serious UV damage. They found animals colonized with 6-HAP producing strains were protected. This is a shot of SKH1 hairless mice treated with DMBA, a carcinogen, followed by repeated UV irradiation after 12 weeks. The bacterial sunscreen clearly works. Mm, so, lather it on. <laughs> the research team have big plans to develop a bacterial sunscreen. But this is years away. And no one knows for sure whether it will or won't work. So what about now? Well, you're probably using bacterial sunscreen. And if you're not, you can. Odds are you've got Staphylococcus epidermidis living on your skin. And there's a pretty good chance some of your Staphylococcus epidermidis are able to produce 6-HAP. This is what the team found when they looked for this bacteria on the skin of 18 healthy volunteers. Now, the darker the yellow block, the more bacteria are present. Only two people had no trace of this bacteria. Everyone else had some, some more than others. So, why the difference? Well, again, no one knows for sure. But mm, we live in a world where being squeaky clean is prized. Could our obsession with germs be leaving us vulnerable? This research suggests it's time to start thinking about nurturing the bacteria that live on your skin. They're part of your defense system. They're not just defending you from skin infections. They might also be protecting you from skin cancer. One way to help them is to keep your body clean using water, not antibacterial soap and water. Of course, it is probably a good idea to wash your hands with soap and water. <laughs> Doing so has been shown to protect you from catching nasty bugs. But as for the rest of you, create better body chemistry by nurturing your skin microbiome. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? Visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library or enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who works hard at being squeaky clean? Share this video with them so they realize Scrubbing away their skin microflora may make them vulnerable to skin disorders. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.